I'm sitting here with Denise Birch, who is um, showing at the Bruce Gallery as part of our 2006-2007 season, and I'm going to be asking her some questions that relate to her quilt pieces, her installations, and her latest uh, DVD animation video compilation, which is called The Dozens, in which she collaborated with five other women artists. But tell me about, <coughs> do you, did you start as a painter? I did, um, mm -hmm. and I had stitching in my history since childhood. Uh, my great-grandmother uh, made quilts and actually grew the cotton that went into the batting for the quilts. And my aunt taught me all sorts of needlework when I was young. But, um, you know, I always thought of that as more crafty kind of pastime mm -hmm. material and was a painter for a long time. But uh, in 2008, I met a quilt maker on a residency who was from my home state of North Carolina. And I think something just kind of woke up inside of me and I became really interested in going back and kind of reclaiming some of that uh, craft element in the work that I was starting to do. My paintings were becoming very cartoony and very graphic and um, somehow it didn't seem like much of a leap to actually make them out of fabric instead. You say cartoony, um, mm -hmm. is, is that a bad word in high art speak? I don't think so mm -hmm. anymore. Um, we, you know, as artists, especially today, you know, we're using elements from all levels of culture. Mm -hmm. You know, there's not a sense of high and low anymore, I don't think. Mm -hmm. I kind of feel like I've gone past the cartoon into the doodle mm -hmm. in some of the work that I've done recently. Um, the more um, multifaceted wall installation pieces have um, a basis in a stream of consciousness drawing that mm -hmm. I was doing that um, um, was very much about um, meandering thought mm -hmm. and daydreaming. Mm -hmm. uh, so that um, the doodle is even a more base form of drawing than um, the cartoon, in a way. How, how do you how do you keep the purity about the doodle? That I'm sure there comes a time when you're all of a sudden conscious conscious about the fact that you're making a doodle into a finished product. How, how do you keep it keep it fresh, so to speak, or keep it kind of innocent? Mm, yeah. That's very true because, um, you know, I'll start with these doodles, <laughs> all these stream of consciousness drawings, and then I'll get a, an offer for, to show them somewhere, and mm -hmm. I'll have a certain wall size or a room to work with, and mm -hmm. I'll actually make a maquette of that room and, or that wall, and then take all the elements from these drawings and juxtapose them and move them around. So in a way, there's... You know, there's, there's two ways of working going on, for sure. Mm -hmm. um, but then usually once I get in the gallery, when I'm installing the piece, there's something that reverts back to the doodle in my mind because I, mm -hmm. I start responding directly to what's going on. I usually leave some aspects undecided until I get in the space, and I just start sort of um, trying to be uh, responsive in a, f a fresh way to what's going on. And I'll actually start doodling sometimes when I'm trying to sort of work out an area. I'll just start drawing in front of the wall until something happens and then I'll make that happen. I, I find it interesting you, you mentioned maquette, so you're, you're referencing three-dimensionality I guess you could say, but then you're, you're composing it into, into very flattened two dimensions. Is, is, there, is there a want to make space as you're taught in the academy, or is it something different than that? Um, it's, I'd say it's more related to uh, graffiti-oriented wall painting than to, um, you know, illusionistic Renaissance perspective. Mm -hmm. But there, are, there have been a few places within the multi-part wall installations where I do kind of try to indicate depth in a really simplistic way, mm -hmm. just with a grid, you know, in perspective or, mm -hmm things overlapping other things, but in a really minimal way. I, I like the fact that it's more about this lateral movement mm -hmm. across the space.
storytelling is really interesting to me. And um, I've always loved music as well. Um, and I would say that there's a certain amount of storytelling in uh, some of the quilt work that I started to do, especially um, the big word bubble pieces where I've started writing these sort of run-on sentences um, that become this time-based experience. Mm -hmm. And, um, and they're, they're not um, linear sentences, they're, sort of, they're almost like verbal collages. Mm -hmm. um, so that, that idea of one thing kind of moving into another thing and changing into another thing and morphing is something that um, made sense to me to go ahead and try to translate into film. Mm -hmm. um, and also, I would say the processes that the quilts refer to are also things that tend towards something that's time-based because even though the quilts and the wall installations are static, they're not moving, they're always referring to some sort of process of movement or change. Mm -hmm. um, primarily the process of decay and um, the breakdown of the dead matter and merging of, of dead matter and then the sort of revivification of that into sort of a fertile material. Um, and it just, you know, that sense of, you know, processes over time also lent themselves to me to animation, a story that I wanted to tell over real time. This was the last rectangular quilt that I made. It was kind of a transition out of, um, out of the single quilt into uh, multiple images. And uh, it's called machination. Uh, I saw this sort of machine kind of chewing away at this mountain inside of this sort of interior slash exterior sort of space. And um, I was really interested in just breaking this all this knit down to this really vibrant kind of dense pattern in that piece. Based on uh, looking at things on the side of the road, looking at building sites, looking at houses torn apart, things coming apart, I was really interested in the idea of building a mountain, like a man-made mountain. Is this a woman's work, or is this something more universal than that? Well, because I'm a woman, it's going to be woman's work mm -hmm. for that, you know, at that reality, because I can't speak from the point of view of a man, because I'm not a man. But I never really, I think I'm in a generation that's kind of past that, in a way. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't go through the 70s reclamation of craft. It already had happened. Mm -hmm. and. Um, you know, I'm of a generation of artists that use everything in their art, that there's not a sense of, you know, um, this having a particular identity. And, I, you know, I mean, there are elements um, like the fists and the word bubbles, you know, those fists are pretty hairy. <laughs> and, you know, I, I see them as male hands, so I think I'm interested in, in um, you know, um, making work that actually mixes gender. Um, in mm -hmm. the wall installation that I did for this gallery, um, Witches, there's a figure on the far left that actually appears to be male and female simultaneously, mm -hmm. this sort of bearded silhouette with an antebellum skirt on. Mm -hmm. So it's, um, I'm very actually interested in more of a merging of sexuality mm -hmm. um, because um, 